going to read tonight one of the greatest miracle stories that ever took place in the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. And when we are finished in this building tonight, you are going to know how. Not through any secret formula, not through any special cliche of man or slogan of man's wisdom. But you are going to know tonight how to make possible your impossibility. Oh, come on, don't, don't patty cake the Lord. Go on, give him a good clap offering. He is worthy. Found in the Gospel of St. Mark, the fifth chapter and the 25th verse. A certain woman, this is one of the greatest miracles that Jesus ever performed. A certain woman which had an issue of blood. Look up here for a moment. If this woman were alive today, where's our workers? John, in the wheelchair section. Please, you're not allowed to do that, John. You know better than that. Once Mars starts to minister here, we do not move a soul. Let my workers please assist people in the front there. If this woman were alive today, probably would call her one that perhaps had cancer, an issue of blood. She had suffered it for 12 years, 26 verse, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. I prayed tonight Holy Spirit will anoint your eyes. I want every one of you in those wheelchair sections looking up here at Mars. I want you to hear. Don't be turning around talking. Did you hear me? Do not be turning around talking. You're going to get something from God. You listen to this word, get ready. I'm expecting an awesome move for cripples. I'm talking to you, yes. I'm expecting an awesome move for cripples in this building tonight. Now listen to the word. When she heard, watch this scene take place. Somebody stretch your hand out to the Father. Stretch it out to God. Look up here. 
say it, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind, watch her, and she touched his garment. For she said, listen carefully, she had predetermined she had made up her mind based on something which we will discover in just a moment, that if I can touch just the hem of his garment, I will be whole. Straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body she was healed. Jesus, knowing virtue, went out of him, turned and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said, Don't you see the great multitude on this street pressing everywhere? And you say, Who touched me? Then he looked round about to see the little woman that had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling because of what was done in her, what she felt in her body, she fell down before him. Jesus said to the woman, Daughter, listen to this. Fix your eyes up here. No time to count light bulbs here. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Somebody stretch your hand out. Say it, faith. Cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Jesus said to this woman, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy place. Before we go one step further tonight, look up here at Mars. Put your Bibles down, close them. Open your spirit. Open your spirit. This building tonight is filled. with people that are facing spiritual and physical impossibilities. You have come to the end of your rope in the natural and there is no place to turn. It's exactly like this woman in the Bible. For 12 years she suffered with this issue of blood. She spent every penny she had on doctors, every penny she had on 
medicine. And I want to say one thing here tonight in the mission to London. We are not religious quacks. We are not crystal ball gazers. We are not palm readers. We are not faith healers. We believe in medical science and we thank God for good, honest doctors. And I had to put those qualifications on there. You don't have to say amen, just say ouch. Good, honest doctors who try to do their best to alleviate the suffering of people. But how many of you know they're just human beings and they're very limited? How many of you know as wonderful as medicine is? Listen to me. Hold on to every word. As wonderful as medicine is, how many of you know medicine is limited? Now, what do you do? What do you do when you've gone to the doctors? When you've turned to every thing that you know how to do for yourself. And you're like this woman. You have to go home. And there's no hope. There's no hope for the cancer. There's no hope for the sugar diabetes. There's no hope for the high blood pressure. There's no hope for the accidents or the strokes or the conditions that have paralyzed our physical body. What do you do? She had spent everything she had. She tried everything that she knew. Now, I tell you tonight, beloved, listen to God's servant and listen to the voice of God in this building tonight. I tell you in Jesus' wonderful, mighty name, what is impossible with man is possible with God. John, please take care of this man here. I'm going to say it again. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke 1 tells us, 37, with God all things are possible. Do not have to go home and die. You do not have to go home from this meeting tonight the same way that you came here. Don't look down. Don't listen to what man tells you. I don't care what your problem or what your need is, whether it is spiritual or whether it is physical. Don't look down, look up. Church, listen to me. What is impossible 
with man is possible with God. God has not left his throne. God is still on his throne. I want you to notice as we journey with this woman for about 10 minutes before we begin the miracle prayers in this building tonight. First thing that happened to her, open your spirit wide. She came to the end of herself. Can you come to that place in God tonight? Someone said to me, Mars, this is not the day of miracles. I'm happy to be confined in my wheelchair or to have my sugar diabetes or to have my physical problems. May I tell you something tonight? Under the awesome anointing of the power of God that's in this building like liquid fire flowing right by your side. The Spirit of God which is everywhere present. May I tell you this? We don't worship days. We don't worship the New Testament beginnings where we read about the wonderful miracles. We don't worship the Old Testament days where we read about Jehovah God who opened the Red Sea, who swallowed the walls of Jericho, who walked into the fierce fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We don't worship days. Days, dispensations have nothing to do with the fact that what you and I worship is not a period of time. Are you getting that? That means you may have to come to the end of some of the things that you've been taught in your church. You may have to come to the end of self. Your pride. Except a corn of wheat, it is written, fall into the ground and die. It abides alone. Are you willing to humble yourself in God's presence tonight? Are you willing to die? There's a lot more to this woman's sickness than what you read on the surface of the scripture. And you have to go deep into the story. This woman was an outcast. Do you know that this woman was divorced by her husband because she had this sickness under the Levitical law? He had a right to put her out, and he put her out. Do you know she could not go to church like you come to this meeting tonight and worship God? She was forbidden entrance into the synagogue. She was segregated. She was forbidden to touch 
anybody. She came to the end of herself. It seems like when you come to that place where you're willing to die, you get to the place you're willing to surrender everything to God, and you say, I don't care what people say. I'm going to press through. I'm going to get through. I'm going to touch God. I'm going to get what God has for me. I don't care what anybody says. She heard a message. Watch her, she quickly journeys towards this incredible miracle. She heard a message. Now, what was the message? Going down the street corner, no hope, no help, no place to turn, no money, segregated, an out she heard a message. It was the greatest message in all the world. She heard about Jesus. May I tell you something tonight in Jesus' name, please? Don't put your eye on the messenger because this man up here, whether he is stocky or whether he is thin or whoever he is or whatever he does, this messenger is not important. What is important is the message, and we pray the messenger be hid behind the message. She heard of Jesus. What did she hear? A great crowd pressing all over the street, saying, there he goes. She said, there goes who? Somebody says, that's him. She says, that's who? Somebody said, haven't you heard? There's a man here called Jesus. He claims to be the Son of God. He is opening the eyes of the blind. He is unstopping the ears of the deaf. He is causing the cripples to walk. The dead are being raised. She heard the message of hope. I tell you, in this building tonight, that is what this mission to London is all about. It is about the message of Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, God sent his son into this world for a divine purpose. It is written, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy. He might destroy the works of the devil. That's why God sent Jesus here. This is the message. It's the message that the psalmist gave us in the 103rd Psalm when he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of God's benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. This is the message, beloved. She heard the message of Exodus when God spoke to the children of Israel. And God said, if you obey me, if you walk before me, 
if you do that which is right. He said, not one disease that I put upon the Egyptians will I ever allow to come upon you. Why? Because I am the Lord thy God who healeth thee. Are you getting the message? Are you getting the message? Are you getting the message? It's the message that Isaiah wrote to us about in the 53rd chapter when he said, who believes our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground and he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that man should desire him but he was wounded here's the message beloved look at around the street corner don't have to go home and die don't have to be an outcast anymore don't have to carry your issue of blood there's somebody in the midst of the crowd who has come here sent by god oh hallelujah come on are you ready are you ready are you ready are you ready to receive the message for your stomach infirmities for your blind eyes for your crippled arms for your crippled legs for your crippled soul he was wounded this is the message this is the message he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity this is the message. Are you hearing the message? The message is that 2,000 years ago, God sent his son into this world to pay the price. To redeem you. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. This is the message. Everything that we suffer, sin, everything that we suffer physically, this is the message. God sent Jesus Christ here to carry that load, to buried in his own body. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him. It was all put on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Oh, come on, put your hand up and wave it. We're healed. We're healed. We're healed. Can you take the message? Can you take the message? Come on. Can you take the message? First Peter 2, 24, this is the message. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. This is the message, that we being dead in trespasses and sins might be alive unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were. Say were. Isaiah looked forward and said are. Peter looked back and said were. Everybody say were. Everybody say Everybody say, say it's done. It's done. It's done. The work is finished. The price is paid. The work of the enemy is destroyed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is the message. She heard a message. The Bible says she heard about Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is the message. He who knew no sin, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us. This is the message. She heard the message. And lastly, watch what happened. She believed the message. How many of you believe God's word tonight? Do you really? Come on, do you really? Do you really? Do you really? Do you really? But you have two choices. You have two choices. Go home and die. Go home and stay in your sin. Go home and continue to carry your sicknesses and your infirmities. Or you have a choice. Look at Jesus, look at the finished work, and say like this woman with the issue of blood, I'm going to press through, and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. I'm going to begin to pray healing prayers, Miracle prayers in just a moment in this building. There's an awesome anointing of the power of God here in this building tonight. Faith, beloved, is a fact, but faith. is an act. You don't have to bear two things ever again. You don't have to carry your load of sin. He who knew no sin became sin for you. You don't have to go out here tonight and lay your head down on your pillow without having the peace of Almighty God. You don't have to carry your load of sin one moment longer. Are you ready to give up that heavy load? And second, you don't have to carry that load of sickness. You say, Morris, how am I going to get rid of it? Faith is a fact, but faith is an act. We get rid of our sins by seeing and believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he paid the price for our forgiveness of our sins and we go to him on the cross and we give him our sins and he takes them and we walk away and we confess 
We are no longer sinners, but we are children of the living God. Somebody say faith is a fact. But faith is an act. Tonight we're going to begin the miracle prayers in just a few moments. Are you ready to receive your miracle tonight? Somebody raise your hand and say, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Tonight, I have heard the Word. I have faith in my heart. And I going to act on my faith. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We see the finished work of Jesus. We hear the message. By